Hello and welcome to this uh, GCSE explainer on wave types and characteristics. We're going to be really looking at different uh, features of waves and why we get waves and then that will lead you into how we get landforms and things like that. So um, just a couple of key terms for you to understand that the top of a wave is known as the crest, the wave crest. The wavelength is the distance between any two crests. And the wave trough, that's the low between two, two crests. And the wave height's the gap between the top of a wave crest and the low in the wave trough. Okay, the movement of water up a beach with sediment is known as the swash, and the movement of the water back down the beach is known as the backwash. And you might have experienced that when you've stood with your feet in the water at the at the beach. The wave frequency is how often the wave hits the coast, often given in uh, how many waves there are per minute. And the fetch, that's the length of water over which a given wind is blown. Uh, so the longer the fetch, fetch generally, the, the bigger the wave. So uh, in the United Kingdom on the southwest coast, we tend to get the biggest waves because the fetch is massive right the way across the Atlantic. Waves break because they're set up um, out to sea and have a, a circular orbit. And we also get pressure differences. So uh, localised pressure differences creating, uh, you know, locally higher pressure pushing down the wave within the trough, lower pressure on the on the crest, allowing it to rise up. Those waves uh, continue to have their circular orbit, but as they approach the shore, friction from the base, uh, from the, the, the seabed, slows down the wave, so the orbit becomes more elliptical. And then eventually, the top of the wave will break, will break over. Okay, and then water will swash up the beach and water from a previous wave will return as backwash. We get different types of wave. Okay, so we'll just have a look at the, the features there. So uh, powerful ocean waves. If you look at those, you can see very frequent, uh, very violent, steep profile, high crests, uh, breaking waves there as well. So we've got real, uh, you get a real sense for power there for those destructive ocean waves, lots of sediment there within the water. And then on the gentle waves, okay, just lapping up against the shore, um, you know, very low wave height, uh, reasonably, reasonably frequent on those ones and um, not very much power really. So the two types of waves that we get um, a constructive wave, which we, we saw there, those will have a smaller wave height, be less frequent. A stronger swash movement uh, up the beach, so more sediment goes up than, than back down. We get a gentle beach profile with those types of waves. And then only destructive waves, larger wave height and more frequent. Weaker swash moves a little sediment up the beach. And a strong backwash carries away lots of sediment. So that would give you uh, a, a steeper beach and we might get a steep angle of strike as we saw with those previous waves that scours lots of material away. In the UK, uh, constructive waves, we tend to get those during calm periods, often during the summer months. When we get our winter storms, we tend to get these destructive waves. So there can be seasonal differences in how much uh, material is, is moved about on a beach and taken away from a beach. And don't forget beaches, you know, from from one day to the next can look completely different. So a little summary there, uh, destructive waves have large wave heights, small wavelength, more frequent, strong backwash and a weak swash. They create steep beaches caused by large storms hit in the UK uh, and often associated with high energy coasts, whereas constructive waves we get smaller wave heights, larger wavelengths, they're less frequent, strong swash, weak backwash, gentle and wide beach, and they're caused, uh, you know, might be caused by storms uh, quite far out to sea, and they're associated with low energy coasts. In terms of tasks, you can define the, the, the terms on your sheet using that diagram, and then you've got a table to fill out. Uh, given the features of the waves, you can maybe draw a diagram in there as well, and then explain why waves break using the diagram that I showed you earlier. Okay, right, we'll just finish up with a little little joke. Why does no one swim in the western coast of South America? Because the water is chilly.
Thanks.